Okay, I'm going to give uh, the bears the first two candles of the day uh, to seize control. If they don't seize control in the first two candles of the day, then obviously we'll start looking on the upside. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, a Wednesday uh, edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com that we wrap up show. Happy hump day everybody. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So let's talk about the tape. Um, last night, if you remember the video, uh, we talked about, you know, first of all, a very, very aggressive session yesterday to the downside. A lot of names uh, got hit. Uh, NVIDIA was definitely the biggest mover. Uh, Tesla got hit yesterday. Uh, Netflix got hit. Zoom got hit. There was a lot of macro breakdowns. And what we talked about yesterday, it was a big rally into the day, right, into the end of the day that really screwed up um, a lot of sell setups what would have been for today. Like in other words, if we would have closed at the lows uh, or anywhere near the lows yesterday, we would have had a really big premium uh, session today to the, to the downside. And my comments were if we could get a gap up and these things get stuffed into supply, if they roll over, things would get starting to get hit. But I did believe there was other value in other places going into today's trading day. So for example, uh, we talked about uh, energy names yesterday, uh, like a PTEN, right? We talked about PTEN yesterday. Uh, we talked about Johnson Johnson. What a letdown. I mean, what a letdown today. Uh, this is the only one that didn't work for me. Not not even a big loss. It wasn't even the point of a big loss. Uh, I bought it off that 68 area. Uh, stock closed 67, 77 the day before. So I only wound up losing like 20 cents in the trade. But the point is, when you have a setup like this, and you have a multi-month top, literally multi-month top, and you have a very, very aggressive move through that area. I mean, this thing went up, what, 25 cents when we were in this thing? So I was like, look, I, I look. this is where you turn around and you say, I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at. I know what I shouldn't be in, right? This is why I trade beta. If this was a setup on Tesla, that was a multi-month uh, consolidation and break above this channel, this candle would have been above my monitor. Okay, it would have been up here. It would have been in my, in my roof. But again, not everything is beta. And that's the whole point. Uh, my comments today, especially in the morning, was I didn't want to be long anything. There was really nothing that I wanted to be long. I felt like um, it was a sucker's rally into supply. And then slowly but surely, the only thing that I really wanted to see today was kind of reversal. Because if things started reversing back down, I knew we were going to catch some value. And what we didn't accomplish or more or less, uh, into yesterday's close, we got that close today. We'll get to, uh, into tomorrow for a second, and, and tomorrow's session in a second. But what I liked about today's session was, again, we didn't deviate uh, from the plan, right? Um, I, I actually started out today's morning strategy, and I said, look, if I have to, there's no beta, There's unless we come in, and which we did after, there was a couple of good, really good pivots, um, but I said, if there is no, you know, if there is no really downside continuation from a lot of these uh, beta names today, I would have no problem uh, si sitting it out for one day and getting more clarity. And luckily, we did some get some clarity. We got some clarity uh, very, very quickly. Stocks got um, stocks got hit into supply instantly, right? Instantly, right out the gate, and slowly but surely, they started coming in. And yada yada yada. There was some pivots to the downside. We'll get to that in a second. But more important, we're, we're getting the setup that I wanted to see last night before we had that short covering rally. We're getting it tonight. So if you look at where we were, right, where we are uh, today versus yesterday, we had this really exaggerated candle to the downside. We didn't take out the highs, didn't take out the lows, half the volume bar. So that is an inside days from yesterday's sell off. But more important, on just on the individual names, what they couldn't do, right? Amazon got hit yesterday couldn't rally, went down lower. And look how it's just hanging on. It's hanging on for dear life. Just needs one more day. Hanging on for dear life here. Roku, you know, couldn't rally. And not only couldn't rally, it took out the previous day's low. And now we're setting up macro ahead of earnings, right? Not really a good side. You got Netflix that broke down yesterday and now went lower today, took out yesterday's low. It's setting up macro for tomorrow. You see where I'm going with this? Look at Tesla, right? Not only did it, it, it didn't rally today, right? Didn't rally today after yesterday's breakdown. Again, the only reason Tesla held up yesterday was that Bollinger Band that held it up. So not only could it 
not reclaim yesterday's level, but it got rejected off the five-day moving average and putting its lowest close in this whole formation, the first close uh, below the supply zone here. And now it looks like it's going to retest this level. And there's a lot of charts like that, right? There really are a lot of names like that. Zoom looks uh, like it wants to go before earnings as well. So if you go through your research today and you uh, are a technology-driven trader, right, you'll realize it's, it's not going to take you long to get your research for tomorrow. And I'm going to give the bears every opportunity, like literally every opportunity to succeed uh, for tomorrow's session. And the one thing that I do but know about the market is, number one, yes, I'm sell biased for tomorrow, right? I am definitely sell biased on technology for tomorrow, but I'm not naive to think that, hey, you know what? Guess what? The stock market can't go higher. Of course it would go higher. That's the whole point. But you have a plan, right? You have a plan. And you're waiting for that plan to play out. Now, if the market in the first two candles does not want to crack today's lows and it doesn't want to reclaim today's levels, then yes, maybe we'll start looking back to the upside for some sneaky channels. But your, your goal is to do the research, put in the work that you are prepared for tomorrow. So just in case we do rally, we'll have a plan B, right? But I'm definitely sell bias for tomorrow. I want to give the Bears every opportunity to succeed. I want to see if the Bulls can wake up tomorrow and start reclaiming some levels. Okay, that's fine. I'm okay to be wrong, right? Again, if you're in this business and all you want to do is be right and get the likes and get the shares and get the thumbs up and the smile, you're in the wrong business, right? That's that social media crap that, let's just leave it there, right? I said too much already. Okay, you, you got to have a plan, you got to have an opinion, and you have to wait for that plan to play out. If it doesn't play out, guess what? There's plan B. You're allowed to sh shift gears and wait for the tide to turn. Um, I'm going to give, it, for all you guys who are joining us on the feed for the first time, uh, there's only six 60-minute candles for my day. I'm going to give uh, the Bears the first two candles of the day uh, to seize control. If they don't seize control in the first two candles of the day, then obviously – We'll start looking on the upside, but again, it's pretty, you know, I'm pretty sell biased for tomorrow. Uh, I would love to see the market kind of move up a little bit, right, at the open, uh, kind of the same thing today. And if once again, they do get uh, rejected into 60 minute supply, we're definitely going to start looking uh, at some downside channels. So, um, you know, pretty basic for tomorrow. Again, sometimes you don't need to, you know, you don't need to overthink. You don't need to dissect uh, too much information. It's just right in front of you in the name of the game is wait for your, your value uh, to confirm. So like we talked about last night on the video, I thought there was going to be um, value in other places uh, that had nothing to do with beta. It actually played out. The only two names that got stuck on stupid was, was right here. You know, Johnson & Johnson, I, which I traded, it went up like 20 cents, did nothing, did absolutely nothing. Uh, and when it went red, I lost 20, 23 cents on the trade. I was gone. I had no problems. Again, it's not about the money. It's the fact that these damn New York Stock Exchange stocks, they just cannot go. It's, it, it's not. They're not Tesla. They're not Netflix. They're not Amazon. They're Johnson & Johnson. No matter how good a stock looks, you always get, you know, you always get enticed by the chart. And then you realize these things go, you know, you know, once in a blue moon, like literally once in a blue moon. It, it, this is why I just don't trade these things anymore. And today it was kind of a reiteration to myself. I just, just leave them alone. So let's talk about today. Uh, FedEx, uh, 305.50, 306 needs to build. FedEx is just an absolute monster. Uh, congratulations for you guys who caught this move. So here it, it took out this 305, 306 level and just exploded. Went to 310. Just a big monster. FedEx has been delivering results, right? Yeah, I said it, right? Uh, Cleveland Cliffs got rejected at 21. There was nothing there. Johnson & Johnson, it could go fly a kite. God bless. Uh, 260, Cigna never built. P10, right? We talked about P10 last night in the video. Uh, new daily base. Needs to build 760, 775. Nice little move on P10. For you guys who are still in this thing, uh, nice looking chart, right? It got above the 760, 775 level. Uh, traded first close over $8. You know, nice little move here. Looks higher uh, for tomorrow. Uh, Hexo. I still like this little Hexo uh, for tomorrow. There was a lot of, um, some headlines came out. Uh, about some clearing firms. I don't remember. It's such a long day. But anyway, uh, on the pot stocks, Hexo 697 needs to build. Uh, I still like it for tomorrow. Um, you know, nice little move. Nothing crazy. Uh, it closed at the high of the day. It took out that 697, closed uh, at the high of the day at 707. You know, this thing does look higher tomorrow if, if God forbid, the pot stocks have a day uh, two. 
Uh, Crocs 105 needs to build. Here was Crocs. Right, if you guys notice, no, you know, very little technology stuff. So it took out the 105, traded all the way up to the 108 area. Uh, so that, and, and again, the, here's my words. You know, if you're trading beta today, um, just just understand there are no man's land, right? That's what we talked about last night in the video. You know, after yesterday's rally off the lows, it's a flip of a coin. Anything you do has to be for quick cash flow trades. Uh, and I, I warned this is very very important to, got, to understand this, guys. For anybody who trades options, especially for, for, the, for the newer trader, you guys need expansion channels. You guys need a clear path to the goal line. There's no way your premium succeeds if your stock is going and it goes up a dollar and it dies. Your premium is going to die right away with it. So I basically said if you're trading uh, to the upside, especially if you're an options trader, your premium will die because of the lack of channels, blah, blah, blah. And here's kind of my point of a couple of pivots to the upside that were just very quick, right? You had Roku 325, 36. Again, only went up a couple of bucks and then it died. The video upgraded for experienced traders only. 588 needs to build for cash flow. Right, ran up like four or five points. Was it a big move? No, and then it died. Right, they got pulled ten dollars. And once I started seeing Roku die, once I started seeing uh, Nvidia die as well, it was just a matter of time that, that we were going to start getting some downside pivots. And here they were, right? Here they were. And Amazon had one spike also, went up like ten bucks, went up ten bucks off this pivot as well. So I said it, look, NVIDIA, you know, take on the way up, right? Again, we're not expecting anything big. Uh, take on the way on the way up on NVIDIA. Crocs, take on the way up on Crocs, right? Uh, Target, again, not a big move. Went up, what, 50 cents? I still like Target. Uh, Target is actually higher uh, after the close. Costco had some pretty decent numbers. So Costco, so Target's above the 230, 213 level. Looks higher, but... Uh, again, these New York stock exchange stocks, they're not tradable. You got to be an investor of it. You have to be multi-day, multi-week investor of it. I just don't have the patience. Why well, love beta? It's instant gratification. You're going to get big channel expansion. You don't need to fight with the specialists. You don't need to fight with retail. It's institutional money flow that's driven in the options market. And this is why uh, I pretty much 90% of my trades are, are, uh, um, are uh, beta. Uh, I traded Tesla today, 672 for builds below can flush. Uh, ran down like four or five points. I still like it for tomorrow. There is a macro channel coming. But again, here's the 672 on Tesla, right? Here's the 672 on Tesla, right over here, right? This whole 672 channel, you know, it again, came in, you know, came in, you know, five, six points. So, uh, you know, not a bad scalp at all. I still like it for lower levels. Here comes P10, new highs. And this is where things got really aggressive. Um, so we're sitting there and the squawk box breaks the news that, hey, oh, by the way, if you guys remember the day before, we traded Peloton to the downside off that 94 breakdown, right? Only went down like a dollar, dollar and change. So in the middle of the day, he just sits there and he goes, oh, by the way, there was a, there was a recall on Peloton treadmills. And we got that news very, very quickly. And it broke that 92.70, 92.50 for builds below can flush. To say that it was a flush was an understatement. Uh, congratulations for all you guys who caught the Peloton. Here was the 92.70, 92.50. Just got absolutely destroyed, absolutely destroyed uh, into the 80, into the low 80s. It traded all the way down to 81 and change. So again, the, the bias is definitely to the sell side. You can see there's so much effort for these tech stocks to start making its way up that as soon as they get any type of supply, they get smacked right back down. These bids get hit uh, faster than you can blink. So again, the point is when you have your game plan, just let it play out, right? What's the worst case scenario? You miss a trading day, let it play out. Don't deviate from your plan. Let the other side of the market tell you you're wrong before you start you know, flipping your buys. So it's very, very important. So yeah, bingo. It got, it got absolutely smashed. Uh, huge, huge move there. Tesla uh, take on the way down. $8 on deck on P10. Uh, yeah, I mean, with the exception of, of Johnson & Johnson, right, Took tech looks like it's going to resume selling for tomorrow. I go, that's a big premium day. This is five hours ago. This is before they started cracking, just because I noticed it just couldn't go up. And then they just started cracking uh, all the way uh, into the close. So that's it, right? That's it. So we're set up for tomorrow. Um, I would love to see... Um, I would love to see a mark, the market gap up a little bit tomorrow, right? Just because it could create um, some eager, you know, out of control longs to buy stock into supply. And if they get stuffed and we get a repeat performance of today, yesterday's prime setup before that rally back into the close is going to be in our lap for tomorrow. We'll see, right? We'll see, said the blind man. Uh, anyway, guys, have a great night. That's it for me. I'm going to go get, get some relaxation, go get some rest. 
and hopefully with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.